What up, crypto gang? My name is Christopher Garcia, aka Crypto Godson. Today, I'm going to be dropping some major news, some major information that Nevin Freeman, the CEO of Reserve Rights, dropped on us last night at 9.48 p.m. June 29th. Today is the next day, and um, I think that this information is very critical, and I need to share it ASAP. This information is honestly a bomb drop. If you really understand the significance of this information, this will go a long way into helping you decide on what decisions you make within your portfolio, especially during this dip. Reserve is very underpriced in my in my personal opinion. Um, before I get started, actually, that's a good point. What I'm sharing is my personal opinion, my perspective. This is not financial advice. All right, next. This information is very important and it's kind of outlining the roadmap for the next six months, at least for the end of 2021, which, as you know, if you've been keeping up a reserve protocol, mainnet is scheduled for the end of 20. At, basically, mainnet is supposed to be launched before the end of 2021. We don't have a specific date, but he does actually touch on that. He also touches on the current transaction volume increase by a factor of three um, since the last update, which is very important. And there's also a lot of other information about just the current strategy that Reserve will be taking moving forward. There's so much information in this video. Um, it's probably going to be hard to go in depth about every little concept, but I'm going to do my best. If you have any questions or comments or need more clarity, please comment below. If there's anything in here that you need clearing up, please comment below. Also, join the Telegram group below if you're interested in um, asking me, you know, specific questions, maybe specific questions that you may have. I can share from my experience. I've been involved in this space since 2017, and I hope I can, you know, basically help you learn a few things. And um, you can, you know, teach me a few things as well. It's all we want to do in my Telegram group is just share knowledge. We're just all about sharing knowledge, sharing perspective. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. That's what a mastermind is all about, right? Um, just sharing knowledge bouncing ideas, putting our brains together. And um, I feel I feel like the, the crypto community is probably the strongest community I've ever been a part of, not only because it's a um, new innovative space, but it attracts the, the, the strongest, most open-minded, most intelligent people in the world, in my opinion. But uh, let me stop talking and just jump right into it. So whew, I think this is a thread of about 15 tweets or so. So um, I'm just going to read them off and share my opinions and let's get to it, man. So first tweet, you might wonder, will Reserve be a DAO? If you're not familiar with what a DAO is, a, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. And um, so the DAO is an organization created by developers to automate decisions and facilitate cryptocurrency transactions. So in other words, it's a basically a company that is ran by a decentralized protocol, I guess you could say, like, I, I, think of like a company like Amazon, but ran in a decentralized manner, similar to how the board votes on different things, but decentralized entities, obviously, all across the world. And um, so a, de a decentralized autonomous organization sometimes calls a decentralized autonomous corporation is an organization represented by rules encoded as a computer program that is transparent, controlled by the organization members and not influenced by a central government. So this, there's a big difference between the board of, you know, these big companies and a DAO. And the idea is to remove the centralized influence that usually the boards of these companies or uh, somebody that has a majority shares of a certain company can kind of over override decisions made by the board and vice versa. If you are interested in learning more about reserve rights, I have created several videos focused on just reserve rights. So if you want to click the link right above right now. It should pop up to your right and click and get educated. So DAO is an effort to decentralize the power structure of any entity, organization, corporation, project, whatever you want to call it. All right. So basically he said the app can't really be a DAO, at least not for a long time, maybe eventually. And the next line, this is the banger. The protocol will be a DAO. So the protocol will be a DAO. Currently, Reserve is centralized, and that's a big weakness for the Reserve app and the Reserve ecosystem. But in the beginning, it's necessary. So next tweet, we've been returning to the topic of decentralized governance as we, as we work on coding the full Reserve protocol. Governance is just as difficult as we've always said, but we've been making some good progress. So he actually 
drops a link to an article so that you know people that don't know can read up and learn about the issues with decentralized voting, um, decentralized governance, and there's, I mean, the whole crypto ecosystem is you know basically trialing out different strategies with respect to how they govern their protocols, their projects. And um, so Reserve is doing a lot of research on that. The space has advanced a lot in the past two years. There are live example systems that are dealing with billions in value. We're studying them as we refine our own ideas. Is there a cool example of decentralized governance you think we should read about? So, you know, their Reserve and Nevin are interested in learning more about other decentralized governance models. I'm personally really excited for the updates we're making to the protocol. We have some new pieces to explain. The plan is to explain them in full detail pretty soon. Lots of documentations, lots of lots of AMAs, which is ask me anything, sort of just like kind of a live stream way that you just get asked questions. Going on podcasts to talk about them. Marketing is coming. We've been silent about the update so far for one specific reason. We want to avoid any confusion and be as clear as possible so that the community understands as thoroughly and correctly what these new pieces are once we announce them. So they're trying to do their due diligence and make sure that when a reserve comes to the point to communicate who reserve is, they can actually thoroughly and correctly inform the, the community. So while we have been coding, refining, and adding, we've been inwardly focused. That inward focus has started to eat at me a little since I do not want there to be an information asymmetry between the core team and the community on this topic. Um, that's huge. If you haven't noticed, um, I've noticed this, that there's been a kind of a lag. At one point, Reserve is doing a monthly AMA, a monthly live stream where Nevin would just talk to community hands-on month on Telegram and um now, they haven't been doing that, but this is, he directly addresses it. So this is great, great news, great communication. I think that this will be the last time reserve protocol development happens behind the curtain. Our upcoming protocol launch will mark a big step in decentralization and further changes will not necessarily come from the core team. Wow. So what he said about the DAO in the previous tweet is he's, he's basically, he means it. So further changes will not necessarily come from the team. He just said the protocol would be a DAO. The uh, big step in decentralization, um, that's one of the biggest weaknesses for RSR with respect to um, just how you evaluate a project objectively. Centralization is a big red flag, and they currently intend to make a big step toward decentralization. That's just a huge green flag. So, And um, that will obviously um, reduce the threat vectors as well. So we'll be putting energy into educating and growing the community, reducing dependence on the core team. You'll see what I mean when we announce these protocol changes. So. They're going to announce the protocol changes very soon. Mainnet launch date depends on implementation details and smart contract audits and so on. We have set an internal target date. That's major. This is the first we've heard of that. And um, obviously, if they have an internal target date, that's that means they're working. They actually have um, somewhat of a feel for when it could be completed. So that's very important. There's only six months left in the year. So I'm obviously, I think, it's Q3 basically next week, well, actually the end of this week. So I think it will be in Q4, which is, you know, October, November, December. We have set an internal, internal date. We'll announce the date in advance once we are confident enough so that the community knows when it's coming. Can't wait for that. For now, the Reserve app will continue to be run by the core team as a pretty normal company. An app like the one we have today needs a solid, solid and trustworthy institution behind it to function. It's kind of like a baby, like, you got to feed it. You got to you know, pat it to sleep. You got to clean up the store. That's how, kind of how they're treating it. But once reserve starts to walk, quote unquote, and they, you know, they stand up the protocol, it's going to grow up and, you know, be its own human per se. So that's kind of how I look at it. Um, in the long run, my vision is not for the reserve app to be the only or even the main way to access reserve tokens and live your life in crypto. We will support others building with reserve and we welcome others entering the ecosystem without our support. So it sounds like other other um, apps, other entities, other um, applications will be able to bolt on or integrate Reserve in their uh, ecosystem, their app, whatever you want to call it. So that's huge. I, this is a new concept I haven't heard. And um, I think that will scale the use of RSV greatly. That's I need to retweet that one. So if you've seen like the way, um, what's a good way? I mean, the USDC, the stable coin, people can use that, obviously, on plenty of apps outside of Coinbase, which is Coinbase Circle slash is where, you know, it's, it's, it's built. It's from it's from the Coinbase Circle team. 
but you can use USDC on plenty of other apps. And so that's obviously a big, big win right there and a big way to scale the usage. Think about the number of products and services that support Bitcoin users today, um, AKA Strike. Look at the way they're using Strike. So I think they're taking notes from the way Strike is being scaled in El Salvador and they want to apply something similar because um, Jack Mahler's and team, they don't limit you know, it's open monetary system. So they want to keep true to the intent that Satoshi Nakamoto had. And similarly, they want to make sure that reserve is accessible outside of just the reserve app, you know, just kind of how Jack Mahler's is allowing, not allowing, but he's he's making it well known that he doesn't want everybody to just use the, the, the strike app. It can be used on plenty of other apps, just like they're making a government owned app inside El Salvador. Uh, but just like someone had to build the first Bitcoin exchange, we think someone has to build the first platform intended for crypto is money. So we're building the reserve app, but it's going to be able to be used elsewhere. All right. We're planning a campaign in mid-August through September where we tell the world what reserve is. We'll tell the story of crypto as money and how it's taking root in places like Venezuela, Argentina, and CO. What is CO? I actually don't know. CO. Colombia. Duh. I should have known that one. Colombia, Venezuela, Argentina. We've had our first 3 million transaction volume date in the app recently. That's major. We're aiming to release updated protocol docs prior to that campaign. Oh, yeah, just to put 3 million in context, they recently reported 1 million per day. So that's a 3x increase already. So they're aiming to release protocol, updated protocol docs prior to that campaign. I'm hoping the news of crypto being adopted for real will change, will bring in a large new audience to the world of reserve and that we can teach them in new protocol on their way to the door. But the campaign isn't about mainnet. So even if mainnet takes longer, the campaign timeline will stay the same. As far as the campaign that will occur from mid-August through September, the main campaign goals are, they have two goals. So one is recruiting effective, passionate people to the core team and also the broader reserve movement. So think of this like clothing brand, brand ambassadors, you know how brands sign athletes to represent them. You can think of it that way. And then organically, just the core community, just on you know social media, Twitter, Telegram, Reddit, um, whatever you want to think of, you know, the crypto community is a little different than probably any other community out there as far as other financial markets. It's sort of like sports teams, how they support their home teams. That's how I think of um, how people, you know, in the social realm, the social media realm support crypto projects. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they recruit, you know, for the broader reserve movement. Number two, educating the world about the impact crypto as money is having an amazing potential. We see a lot of the focus lately has been upon store value, um, obviously with Bitcoin in the mainstream media and then DeFi um, as far as like NFTs primarily. Um, that's primarily what, what has the narrative that are being that is being discussed um, as far as mainstream media and as far as, you know, buzz as far as the masses go. But you know, Reserve is aiming to educate the world about the impact crypto's money is having, especially within hyperinflationary countries such as Venezuela, Argentina, Colombia. We'll be talking to a lot of reporters, videographers, and podcasters who we have declined to do interviews with until now, since we've been so heads down. If you are one of them, our sincere apologies for being so quiet. Now is the time. Please do get in touch. If you have a place you think Reserve should be shared, get ready to share it. If you have an outlet you think should interview reserve, now is the time to introduce us. So it's like the floodgates are opening. Nevin and the rest of the team are ready to, you know, basically talk. They're ready to be open and share the news. They're ready to market what they're about to do after mainnet, and they're ready to share what's going on currently. And I remember um, this is actually pretty relevant because Dan Held was talking to Nevin before, and he wanted the numbers. And Reserve is finally able to give those numbers. They're like they're pretty much ready to give those numbers. So I, I will expect Nevin to be on Dan Held's podcast for sure. And then others like um, Anthony Pompliano, um, maybe um, Coindesk, Cointelegraph, you know, all the main, you know, Decrypt, and then possibly CNBC, you know, a lot of uh, the mainstream crypto, I guess, uh, media streams. I would expect to see them on there. This is something I've been looking forward for a long time. Without further ado, stay healthy. Let's get wealthy.